And it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're going to show you how to perform a USB BIOS flashback on your MSI B650 Mag Tomahawk Wi-Fi. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in this video, we're going to show you how to perform a USB BIOS flashback. Now, this is something which isn't entirely necessary for a lot of AM5 users, especially when this video is recorded back in January 2023. But as new processors come out on the market, no doubt there'll be an 8000 series and also processors with integrated graphics, which are more beefy than what we've currently got, then there's a very strong chance that you may still want to pick up one of these boards at a bargain price and you want to flash the BOSS to support the latest processors. Now, as it stands at the moment, pretty much all the processors on the market are supported from this board out of the factory. Having said that, AMD have released a new AGISA code, which is 1.0.0.4, which actually also introduces the support for non-X processors and also the X3D processors from the AM5 platform. So I'm going to go ahead and update the BOSS on this one Anyway, just before I get the first install on it, just so I know I'm on the latest version. Something else it does actually introduce as well is a new thing from MSI called TDP Overclocking. This is a super simple way of overclocking your processor. Rather than going in and manually configuring anything yourself, you can literally select your desired TDP of the processor and it will just run balls to the wall until it hits that TDP. So giving you an extra boost in theory. Anyway, with that said, let's get on with it. So there's some things you will actually need obviously to perform this task one of which is a working PC or computer, so you can download the BIOS and extract it onto a USB stick. You'll also need, obviously, the motherboard itself, something to actually place it on. I'm gonna be just using the motherboard box. You'll also need a USB drive. Now, it does have to be a 32 gig or less USB drive. Various drives will work. The one I've always found very good experience with is this SanDisk one. I'll put some links for it in the video description. This is SanDisk Flare 32 gig. You'll also need to be able to format this as well, so make sure there's nothing actually on it that you need to keep. You also need some means of powering the motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my little mini power supply here. This is the Tough Power 450. You need two connections on it, one of which is your main 24 pin power connection for the CPU power, and also your eight pin connection for the auxiliary CPU power. Obviously, you will need a power lead for the power supply as well. But once you've got that done, that is pretty much it. So let's head over to the computer and we'll download the BIOS, show you how to rename it and extract it, put it onto our USB stick, and then we'll follow up with flashing the BIOS. Okay, so we are at the desktop now. So I'm gonna put the USB stick into the computer and we'll head over into File Explorer. Look at our USB drive. There currently is a BIOS on there. So it's always a good idea to format the drive anyway. Make sure it's FAT32 and the allocation size you can set to the drive's defaults. Once you're happy, click start. It'll say that it's gonna remove all the content. So make sure you're happy with that before you click okay. And there we are, there is our formatted drive. So the next thing we can do is to head over to the MSI website and actually get the BIOS. I'll put some links for this in the video description for you. But if you go to the MSI website, head over to the support tab and then you've got on the main one, you've got drivers and downloads and you've got BIOS driver, firmware. This is for the LED, so you don't need this one, but for the actual BIOS itself. Now, currently there's a new update, which is the beta version, as I said earlier. So this is the AGISA combo 1.0.0.4. So that's the one we're gonna use. This one was actually released, um, it looks like today. So we're gonna go ahead and download that one. And that is the file name. I'm going to save it to the desktop. So click save. Shouldn't take very long at all. It's a very small file, only nine megabytes in size. So once we're happy there, we can close that down. There is our folder, which is zipped. So you will need to extract it. So in order to do that, we're going to right click and choose extract all. I would recommend using the Windows built-in extraction tool. It does seem to give favorable results. I have had a few issues with WinRAR previously doing this. So if you can use the built-in Windows one, it's asking for a destination. We're gonna do it straight to the desktop and this will give us our folder and it's already opened it up there. What we're gonna to need to do now is go into the folder and you've got a text file and you've also got the BIOS file. Now the BIOS file should be extracted to the file size of 32,768 kilobytes for this particular one. And currently it is known as a 131 file. Make sure that you've got file extensions showing. So you can go into your menu here 
go into options and you want to have it so that view and show file extensions is known. So there we go, show hidden files, folders and drives. And also this button here, hide extensions for known file types is unchecked. Otherwise you won't be able to see the file extension. Once you're happy with that, click on the file name here and we're going to rename this so you can delete the whole lot and you want to call it msi.rom. You can do this in uppercase or lowercase, it doesn't make any difference. The actual system doesn't look at the text to see if it's upper or lowercase, it just looks for the name, so that's fine. You'll get the thing here saying, do you want to change the file name? It may become unusable. Yes, we do. And there we go, so that is our ROM file. So now we can right click on this to copy it across to our drive. You can choose cut or copy, it's entirely up to you. So I'm just going to do cut. Then we're going to go over to our USB drive, right click and choose paste. So basically we're just putting the file onto our USB stick. We can then close that down and we can take the USB drive out and head back over to the computer. So we've got our USB stick now armed with our new bar. So let's get things set up. So I'm gonna use our motherboard box for this particular process. Um, you can use pretty much whatever you want. Obviously, probably best not to do it on carpet. I'm gonna grab our power supply, plug this into the mains, make sure it's turned to the off position. So we're gonna plug in our main power. And then I'm gonna do the 24 pin into the 24 pin connector on the main board. And then in the top corner, you've got two bunches of eight here. So you can plug it into either one, doesn't make any difference at all. As long as it's getting power, that's absolutely fine. So now we're pretty much ready to turn on the power supply. And I'll turn that around so you can see if the fan spins. I don't think it will on this particular one because it's uh, not much of a draw. So USB stick, plug this into the USB flashback port, which is highlighted with the rectangle around the outside of it. And you'll see on the very end, there is our BAS flashback button. So what I like to do, it does say in the manuals just to press the button, but I like to press and hold it for the count of three seconds just to make sure that it's registered, then release, and then just wait to see what happens. So what we're looking for is for the LED to start flashing. Generally on previous editions of this with the AM4 boards, it's done a slow flash, fast flash, slow flash, then the light has gone off. And that's what we're looking for at the very end for the light to go off. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this and see how it goes. This is my first time flashing an AM5 board, so uh, fingers crossed, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna press the button in, so one, two, three. And I'm pretty sure, yes, I can see the light. So just behind there, there was a flashing LED. And hopefully you can still see that flashing away. Yeah, excellent stuff. If you've got a USB stick, which actually has its own LED in it, ignore what the USB stick is doing. You wanna be concentrating on the motherboard itself. Currently actually on the board, there are two LEDs showing, one of which is the CPU, the other one is the RAM, which is illuminated at present, which from what I can tell is absolutely fine. I think that's just a way of showing you that the system is actually doing something. So in terms of actually time span, I'm not too sure how long this is gonna take, but we'll keep an eye on the, uh, the flashing LED there. And the time is now four o'clock exactly, so we'll see how long it takes. Okay, so the power supply has switched off and the LEDs have gone off. That does appear to be it, although I'd have got two LEDs left on, on the side there, as you can hopefully see. On the diagnostic D-LED, which looks like the first two, so CPU and RAM, but obviously there's no CPU installed or no RAM. So I'm, I'm hoping that is just one of those things where that light stays on regardless, but I have to install the processor and find out. So there we go, all done. I was a little bit concerned about those two lights staying on, but it's uh, just one of those things, it just seems to be a remnant of the way the boss flash system works. Whether or not they'll rectify that and it will go off in the end, I don't know. The main one to be concerned with is the LED light at the top here for the boss flash mechanism. Do not turn the motherboard off whilst it's in that flashing state because uh, yeah, things will go very wrong very badly. Although having said that, the theory of having a USB flashback is the fact that you can kind of redo your boss should you make a mess of it. So that's absolutely fine. I did find turning off the power supply, turn it back on again. We don't have any LEDs on here now at all. So this is absolutely fine and we're ready to assemble our system. So there you go. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash the like button and don't forget if you want to, you can hit the subscribe button and the chime notification and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video.
Thanks for watching.